In the anatomical lower extremity, there exist three cardinal planes, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Anatomical motion that occur parallel to these planes are considered to be the dominant motions of that plane. The horizontal or transverse plane divides the foot in a superior and inferior half. Adduction and abduction are the motions that occur. Parallel to this plane, adduction is when the foot and leg are medially rotated toward the midline of the body. Abduction is when the foot and leg are laterally rotated away from the midline. The frontal or coronal plane divides the foot into anterior and posterior portions. Inversion and eversion are the motions that occur parallel in this plane. Inversion is when the plantar surface of the foot rotates toward the midline of the body. And eversion is when the plantar surface of the foot rotates away from the midline of the body. The sagittal plane, which in the foot is approximated to the osteological axis of the second metatarsal, separates the foot into medial and lateral halves. Parallel to this plane, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion refer to the relationship between the surface of the foot and the anterior surface of the leg. Thus, dorsiflexion is when the dorsum of the foot moves toward the leg, whereas plantar flexion is defined when the dorsal surface of the foot moves away from the leg. It should be noted that the process of walking happens in the sagittal plane. Triplanar motion does not occur in parallel to any of the three cardinal body planes mentioned. It is merely one motion consisting of components from all three body planes. This can be demonstrated in the lower extremity by actions of pronation and supination, which are triplanar motions. Pronation is a motion of the foot which is comprised of eversion, dorsiflexion, and abduction. With this, the foot is seen to move toward the anterior leg, while the toes and plantar surface move away from the midline. Whereas supination consists of inversion, plantar flexion, and adduction, resulting in the foot to move away from the anterior leg, with the toes and plantar surface moving toward the midline. At a particular joint, in order for a given triplanar motion to be in supination or pronation, it must consist of motions discussed above. The amount of each movement depends on the anatomy of the joint. With that said, it is critical to understand that pronation and supination are triplanar motions, but not all triplanar motions are considered pronation or supination.